Let's get started. Hey, man. Hey. Hey, thanks for coming over to help me unpack. Yeah, no uh, Grab that box for me, would you? All right. Don't worry, it's not that heavy. Oh, dude, come on. All right, man, so this is the new studio. What do you think of the place? Looks good, dude, but seriously, what is in the box? That is the Fractal Design Vector RS. Its modular internals make it the perfect case to build in, whether you're doing an air-cooled or liquid-cooled PC. Okay, but why do you need it now? Well, with the tempered glass side panels and just the right amount of RGB, it makes it the perfect centerpiece for any room. Okay, but you don't even have anything else in here. Yeah, I guess I could have at least set up my desk first. With customizable effects, adaptable layouts, and interchangeable elements, the Vector RS becomes what you want it to be, the perfect showcase for your system. Click the links down in the video description to learn more. You have no idea how long I've been waiting to say this in this room. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff, and today, I've got a pretty fantastic server build for you. A couple of months ago, a friend asked me to build him a home server, and he wanted to run a lot of the same services that I've done tutorials for on this channel. A whole home VPN, ad blocking, Plex, FreeNAS, and a couple of other home services like a Unify controller for all of his networking devices. The one catch on this build, though, was it had to be home and wife friendly. He didn't want a full rack full of servers with a networking switch on top blaring their fans at 100%. It had to be a system that could sit in a bedroom and run fairly quietly. I thought that goal was very achievable. So today we're going to be building a combo Proxmox and FreeNAS server. And to do that, we're going to be reaching back to the roots of my channel and bringing back one of my favorite X79 Chinese motherboards and the Xeon E5 2688 core CPU. As we're going to want plenty of memory headroom for virtualization and to run ZFS inside of FreeNAS, we went with 64 gigabytes of DDR3-1866 ECC memory. For storage, we have a single silicon power 256 gigabyte NVMe storage drive to run the Proxmox OS, and then eight four terabyte HGST SATA Enterprise drives. All those drives are gonna be wired up to the LSI host bus adapter here on the front of the table. And other parts in the build are a deep cool GAMX GT to keep the processor nice and cool, and a set of Arctic F14 fans. For the power supply, I did go the refurbished route with a Corsair 850 Gold unit, fully modular. This should be a perfect match for this system. And all of this is going to go into a Fractal Design Define R6 with the solid steel side panel and the noise deadening material inside, again, to keep the whole build nice and quiet. So without any more ado, let's get this thing together. Boy, I will say this for the Fractal Design Define R6, it can hold a lot of hard drives. Technically, the system is equipped to hold up to 11 drives. I've got eight of them in there, plus there's a couple extra two and a half inch sleds that could be utilized. So uh, in the future, if we wanted to add some cache disks to the FreeNAS array or uh, just some more storage in general, there's plenty of expansion in here. 
So how did the build process itself go? Overall, I think it went fairly smoothly. I did run into one thing that I really wasn't expecting, although with my experience with these boards, I really should have been, and that's the lack of an onboard video card. If you notice during the build montage, I did have a Quadro K600 installed, although we did not actually purchase a video card for this system. So uh, I put that in simply so I can get Proxmox installed. Uh, this is going to be running headless as a server, so we really won't need access to the video at all. What I might do before I send it off to my buddy though is uh, go ahead and install something like an NVIDIA GT610 or an old Quadro or AMD card that I have laying around. Something that doesn't require any power but will give us video output in case there's ever a problem with the system. But like I said, the rest of this build was pretty uneventful. The M.2 NVMe SSD was recognized right away and I was able to install Proxmox on it as you would a normal system. That is not something to take for granted with a lot of these Chinese X79 boards. Remember, X79 does not officially support NVMe for a boot drive. And so compatibility is a little bit hit or miss, especially the way they shoehorned it into this board. But everything seems to be in order. The E5 2680 is recognizing all eight cores and 16 threads. We've got all 64 gigs of our ECC memory showing up. And uh, yeah, it's time to get Proxmox installed. Rather than walking you through that process again, I'm just gonna point you right up here to the previous tutorial I've done on installing Proxmox. The process is pretty much the same. We're just gonna install that onto the M.2 NVMe drive as a boot disk. Once you have Proxmox installed, it's time to start digging into the configuration to actually make this thing work as intended. That is a Proxmox as a host and FreeNAS as a guest, with FreeNAS taking control of six of these drives all on its own. First and foremost, I'm gonna copy over the FreeNAS ISO into the ISO library of Proxmox so we're able to boot a VM from it. Next, we're gonna to need to define where Proxmox will actually be storing the virtual machine disks. And for this, we're gonna be using two of the four terabyte drives we installed in a mirrored configuration. There are a couple commands you'll need to figure out which drives to map where, but don't worry, you don't have to just sit here and listen to me read them out loud. You can actually go down to the video description where I have them listed out. The first command is LSHW. Now this is not a command that's installed in Proxmox by default. You'll need to get that from the apt repository by doing apt git install LSHW. Next up is a full listing of the directory dev slash disk slash by dash ID. And this is how the drives are actually addressed within Proxmox. And lastly, lsblk. In my case, we have drives SDA through SDH to worry about. For Proxmox, I'm going to be using disks 06 and 07 or SDG and SDH respectively. To do that, I'm gonna go into the server node, go down to storage and click on ZFS and create a new ZFS pool. Selecting drives SDG and SDH and creating a mirrored configuration will create all the storage that I need for Proxmox, giving me four terabytes of redundant storage. Next, we're gonna create our FreeNAS VM now that we have storage allocated for that, but we're not actually going to start the VM yet. That comes after we assign the other six disks over to it. Once the VM is created, which if you need more information on that, right up there. <laughs> For my FreeNAS VM, I'm gonna go ahead and give it six processing cores as well as 24 gigabytes of memory. Now, FreeNAS does recommend eight gigabytes for the base OS plus one gigabyte per terabyte of physical storage that you have in your server. In the case of this server, we are allocating a full 24 terabytes of physical space over to the VM. However, we're only talking about a home user with a couple of people at home. So 24 gigs should be more than enough to handle that. Once the FreeNAS VM has been created, we're gonna go back to the server node, click on shell and type in those three hard drive commands again and start allocating our disks over to the new VM. For a much more detailed description on actually assigning disks to a VM, go ahead and click the link to the Proxmox form that I use down in the video description. In a nutshell, we are going to be assigning these six physical disks over to the VM exclusively. To do this, we need to know which disk is which in the dev slash disk slash by ID folder, which is why we need all three of those commands so we can corroborate all those numbers. In my case, we're gonna be looking at the SCSI disks inside of that directory, and as you can see, there are two disks with two partitions each, which are assigned to Proxmox, so we'll be ignoring those, leaving us with six drives. To do this, I copy and pasted the drive names from an SSH session into a text folder on my Windows desktop. Then I can edit the commands manually and re-enter them into the shell. Once I have all six drives mapped over to the FreeNAS VM, it's time to start up FreeNAS and install the OS. Once again, we're not gonna do a full tutorial on FreeNAS setup today as I already did one a couple of years ago. However, that one is not up to date with the newest 11.2 UI. However, the process is pretty much identical. I set up my FreeNAS VM with a 20 gigabyte virtual boot disk, which is where we'll be installing FreeNAS onto. And as you can see, we also have these six 3.6 terabyte drives already showing up, which is a very good sign. Once the FreeNAS OS is installed, setting it up is identical to a bare metal machine with six four terabyte drives installed. Set up your ZFS pool, set up your file shares, and we're done. 
Now, there are gonna be a lot of people who question why I set up a Proxmox server with a FreeNAS VM, as Proxmox itself has ZFS and can work as a file server. Likewise, there are gonna be some who ask why I'm running FreeNAS inside a VM when FreeNAS itself has virtualization support, so I could just use that as the hypervisor OS. The reason being is I like Proxmox as a virtualization OS. I like the features that KVM offers you. I like the hardware pass-through. I like all of the features that it has baked in with the ZFS support to go on top of it. But at the end of the day, Proxmox really isn't designed to be a file server and doesn't have a lot of the integrations and user interfaces required to be a file server. Yes, you can bash your way through everything because at the core of it, it's just Linux. However, I would rather just use it as a hypervisor OS. Likewise, on the FreeNAS side, FreeNAS does support virtualization. However, it doesn't support hardware pass-through and it doesn't have a lot of analytics into how your virtual machines are actually running. They simply run. It's not designed to be a hypervisor system. And I like FreeNAS as a file server. The analytics that you get in it and the power that you have over your file system is very, very deep and very intuitive. It's designed to be that. So this to me is kind of the best of both worlds. You get the full virtualization support of Proxmox and the full file system and file sharing support of FreeNAS. And with that, I think we're gonna call this one completed. However, my job on this server is not quite done. There's a number of other VMs I'm going to install on this system. Like I mentioned before, he wanted to run a lot of the same services that I run here in my house, but out of a single box. And I think we achieved that goal. So I need to set up VMs for Pi-hole, for OpenVPN, uh, for Unify server and a Plex server. So my work is not quite done, but if you're interested in any of those services, again, link right up there. And that's going to do it for today's video. Let me know what you think of this server in the comments down below. Also, let me know what other services you'd like to see tutorials for. I'm always interested in what you guys want to know so I can dive into it myself and produce some more content for you. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. And be sure to follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with my daily shenanigans or to follow builds like this. If you're interested in any of the parts from today's build, you can follow the Amazon affiliate links down in the video description below. And by the way, we did buy every single one of these parts. Not one of them was sent to me for review or for sponsorship. Every single dollar came out of his pocket to build himself a home server. And that is going to do it for me in this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers all.